Hello, Gaz Williams here, and quick video really just about uh, the upcoming NAM show next week, NAM 2016, and just a few little, mm, a few little chin strokes about what could be possibly coming. Let's get straight to it. So, uh, don't forget. Sonic State are going to be there, the whole gang, well, apart from me, are going to be there bringing all the latest uh, scoops. And I know they've got some real juicy, juicy things lined up. Uh, so they will be first, as always, with some of the biggest scoops in the, in the industry. So make sure that you subscribe to Sonic State. And there is a live blog that's going to be packed full of the latest stuff coming from NAMM. So that's going to be going live in on Wednesday. So make sure that you follow that and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and thank you again to everybody who's joined since last week since I've started sort of promoting this thing it's really really great to have so many people uh, following this really so I'm just quite interested to see where this whole malarkey is going to go anyway blah 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 enough about me let's get straight to NAM 2016 okay so first up is Roland and what will Roland be showing now they've been really kind of on fire in the last few years with some great new products coming out and expect to see something pretty big from them this year. Uh, strongly rumoured is some form of MPC style sampler. Um, of course, Roland themselves have had very, you know, some very well regarded products in this category before the MV8000, the MV8800 as well, I think was the last model. So we could be seeing something from them, uh, but possibly this time rebranded more in uh, as an IRA product. And rumours seem to suggest that, that that's what will be coming from them with various vintage sampling models uh, included. So that that could be interesting. Um, also, coming from Roland, expect something along the lines of uh, a System 8. You know, now this could be um, like a larger version of the System 1. Now, I've used the System 1 extensively and think it's a really cool keyboard. Obviously, a lot of people weren't very keen on the, uh, the shallow sort of key action on the System 1. Uh, the System 1M, of course, came out last year, which was the module version with lots of uh, Eurorack um, uh, insert points. Um, but what will what would the System 8 be? Well, possibly it could be like a larger form keyboard. Maybe Roland would have responded to that. And, uh, and, uh, and maybe it would have various slots for loading in lots of plug-outs. Uh, so, Plugouts being Roland's own format, which work as plugins or can be then put into the synthesizer. In the System 1, you of course only had one plugout slot, um, but we have actually seen quite a few plugout synths coming out from Roland. There's the, uh, well, it was the SH101, uh, the SH2, then followed by the ProMars, and then recently there's the System 100 also in plugout. And dare I say, could we expect to see Roland's recent boutique series released as plugouts? And that would seem to make sense to me. Um, various people are saying that the boutiques are getting increasingly hard to find in shops. Uh, Roland did say that it was a limited edition when it came out, so that's quite possible that uh, <laughs> that's always been their plan. Wednesday or so, we will have to wait for and see what will happen from Roland. Okay. The one I'm really excited in, uh, rumour-wise, is the Waldorf rumour that they're going to be releasing something called the um, Kassettenspieler, well, as the rumours are suggesting, which is in the same format as the uh, the Rocket and the Strike Vet and the the two pole, the the filter module. Uh, now I'm a big fan of these. I've got the Rocket and the Strike Vet. And I think that the form factor is brilliant. And if they get the price point right as well, then this could be a big hit. But wait, what is it? Well, theoretically, if the rumours are true, it's going to be like a, a Mellotron in a box. Um, now, we've seen these Mellotron racks and various other things. Uh, they tend to come in at much bigger price points. So if Waldorf get the pricing right and bring out a little box that can have all those classic Mellotron sounds in it, I think they could have a real winner on their hands. I know I definitely would get one. <laughs> okay, so Yamaha, the big news from Yamaha probably is surrounding their uh, much-vaunted um, montage keyboard, which is 
you know, these are the, these large format workstation style keyboards with bags and bags and bags of power. All sorts of stuff is going to go on in the montage. So let's just have a little look at a picture of it. Oh, now, this kind of thing, hmm, I'm not so interested in these sort of things anymore, but I'm sure you know many of you would kind of find this sort of thing very appealing. Uh, certainly touring keyboard players or people who are looking for a one-stop solution, this thing has got it all. However, hmm, I don't know that I'm that excited about it, just because uh, I kind of feel that software and everything else is... It, eclipse this kind of product in some respects. I know it's a bit controversial point, but uh, it does look like the hardware's quite nice. It looks like there's a fair amount of real-time control, and that screen is pretty huge. Um, and it's that big coloured knob there that sort of looks like it could be quite interesting. I wonder if that's something that they've learnt from their um, than Steinbeck. Steinberg, who of course are now a part of Yamaha with the AI knob, so just like a single knob, whatever you happen to touch or be pointing to, that will control. But I've also read that this is going to be some sort of controller that can be like a multi-macro that can do lots and lots of things. So let's wait and see what that's all about. Okay, so Korg. Now Korg, obviously, as I mentioned in my last video with the mini log. Now by the time my video had come out, they uh, YouTube had got flooded with loads more features about the mini log. There's not much more I can add to that other than I expect that's going to be a very popular uh, attraction at NAMM. But um, the big mm, rumour, well, there's two big rumours, I think, uh, surrounding Korg, one of which is um, will we see another ARP model? And more importantly, will we see a 2600 in the same reissue style that we saw with the Odyssey. And I think the Odyssey has been quite a successful reissue for Korg, so it would seem to make sense that something like that could be coming along. And I know that if they did announce that, it's a real chance of a big internet breakdown. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know much about that, actually, whether that's going to be, if that's just unsubstantiated or not. I really hope that is the case. But uh, the other thing from Korg is uh, there has been rumours that they're going to be expanding the Volker range, which, again, makes a lot of sense. It's been a really big success for Korg, the Volker range. And the thing that I know I've been asking for and many, many people have been asking for is some sort of Volker mixer. And I think they might be foolish if they miss the opportunity to bring something out like that because, you know... Um, um, myself, like many people, have, have just started to really return to um, hardware. Now, you know, I, I tend to really like these small format uh, hardware devices. So, you know, I don't really want a massive mixing desk, but just small mixer with lots and lots of inputs could could be very, very well. Certainly, by me, would be highly appreciated. But I'm, I'm sure many other people would be looking for something similar. Uh, okay, Dave Smith. Now, I think we know pretty much that Dave Smith is going to be showing a new synthesizer there um, following last year's incredibly successful Profit 6 launch. And then obviously later on in the year, we saw the Profit 6 module. Will Dave Smith be bringing out a new monosynth? I think that is highly likely considering the certain models. I think the Mofo and various other models have been uh, taken from the existing product line. So there is definitely a space there. I mean, the Pro 2, which came out a couple of years ago, fantastic synthesizer, uh, maybe a more simplified version of the Pro 2, you know, see what I'm saying? Pro 1, maybe a Pro 1 a la Profit 6 could be couldn't it anyway so but we definitely think that he'll be showing something new so that's quite exciting uh, electron we're not sure about electron i don't know if electron have got anything coming but they certainly are going to be keen to be um pushing overbridge 1.10 out which uh which is just recently well i'm not sure if it's out yet but it's been announced um so that again is you know still is a really remarkable technology there and there's a lot of there is a lot of legs in it but a lot of people will be going yes but overbridge as good as it is it doesn't support the octa track will we see some sort of update to the octa track i mean the octa track as we know fantastic machine with lots of fans out there you know its reliance on slightly outdated technology like compact flash would suggest that like a, a little bit of a not a major re reboot but just possibly a new Octatrack with possibly SD card support and some sort of overbridge uh, it, implementation could be something that might be uh, might be a big hit for them if they do choose to do that. But uh, they're only a small company, so I I'm not sure. Uh, Novation will Novation be 
bringing a poly, an analog poly, to NAM 2016. Hmm. Lots of things could suggest that might be the case. The base station 2 has been a big hit for them, and it would seem to suggest that some big synth from Novation, I mean, because the Ultra Nova now has been out for a number of years, okay, we've seen it kind of, uh, the Ultra Nova engine then appearing in the Mini Nova and more recently in the Novation circuit. So I think that digital side of Novation, is, with certainly that engine, has been, you know, well used. However, you know, expanding on the base station too and the analog aspect of that could well be, you know, could point to something new coming from them. Fingers crossed on that one. That could be good. Um, Moog, Moog, or however you want to call it. Uh, what would they? What, what what might they be bringing? They had a great year last year, obviously with the reissue of the big modules, and a little bit later on in the year we saw the Mother Thirty Two. Uh, so I don't know if we could expect much from them, but how interesting would it be if we saw things like the Moogafuga or the Mogafoga? Ah, Moogafuga. Let's just call it Moogafuga. Uh, some sort of Mother 32 format effects unit featuring analog Moogafuga effects. That could be very, very nice. So maybe, and of course that, you know, that is Eurorack compatible. So I could see that being something that would go down well. Uh, other than that, I'm not sure, not sure. I mean, the Sub 37, maybe a bigger version of the Sub 37 that like we saw with the uh, Voyager XL, some sort of expanded version of the Sub 37 possibly, but maybe a bit too early for that just yet. Anyway, not sure about that, but um, Native Instruments. Uh, native Instruments, um, my feeling is that we might see some machine, some news on the machine front. It's been two years since machine version 2.0, and two years as well since the last machine hardware, which was the machine studio. So a new machine could be uh, could be on the cards. And of course, uh, Native Instruments' focus has been on their keyboards, um, uh, the complete control keyboards. And it would be interesting to see if they do something which is some more of a hybrid of that and the machine. So yes, interesting. I've got lots of uh, ideas of how I would like machine 3.0 software, how I'd like to see that develop. So I, you know, I'm fingers crossed again there that something interesting could happen. Um, Arturia, Arturia have in, again, in recent years been coming out with some fantastic products. The, uh, uh, the Mini Brute and the Micro Brute have been gigantic success for the French company and uh, the Polybrute seems like the obvious thing. So will we see the Polybrute arrive now or will that be held back until uh, Music Messer? Uh, hmm, not sure. We'll have to see. Again, this whole polysynth, this whole analog polysynth area, you know, is something to be, well, you know, I think that in a way, sorry, let me just cut to the chase. Korg's slightly early mini log release suggests that they might be trying to sort of get their synth out that they know something to get that synth out before this onslaught of analog polys hmm interesting times and arturia's big hit last year the beat step pro will they be expanding on that range you know i mean uh, i've got beat step pro here i think it's very good although i can completely see where there's huge areas for a bigger and better one so hmm, might be too soon after the beat step pro for that one to come out though uh anyway akai akai hmm the uh recently launched mpc touch uh seems to have been going down quite well although it being a computer controller a la machine and the other uh, mpc renaissance etc people would just be so much more excited if that was a real standalone thing. Will we see the much vaunted standalone MPC actually getting a proper release date now? We've, like I have said in the past that they've been working on that and we've seen some prototypes. So that would be interesting to see if that's actually going to become a reality because I think that would get a lot of people very excited. Now, Akai have recently entered into the uh, analog uh, the analog world again with the pretty terrible Rhythm Wolf, Timber Wolf, and um, Tomcat. I, now I say pretty terrible, 
I have had a go with these things and I'm you know I wanted to like them I like the form factor you know the the Timberwolf's quite a big substantial keyboard and you know but it really is just not a not oh, it's a shame <laughs> but I hope that the n enormous amount of negativity that those products have uh have been receiving doesn't make Akai you know move away from the analog market because I think it would be a great shame I mean there has been rumors now about some sort of return to the AX73 or which I think would be a very strange synth to sort of reissue but you know we want them we you know Akai have in the past made some classic pieces of equipment which have had enormous contribution to to the you know the world of rock and pop and dance and everything else you know they, they've they been huge players so you know i hope that they haven't uh <laughs> they haven't had their fingers too burned uh and anyway what else we wanted to talk about uh i i was just going to mention one more thing yes of course behringer and the behringer synth i have feelings that we might see something about this now because it's been under we they've announced it or they've announced their intentions and I know there's been a lot of development going on with it so is it time for it to be launched that would be a biggie because that is potentially a very exciting launch initially they were talking about it being a clone of the ARP Odyssey now I think maybe things have changed now since Korg have brought out you know a virtual replica of the Odyssey so maybe that's made them go in a different direction I'm not sure or I'm not certainly not telling at this point in time there could be something quite exciting coming from them and i think you know i've mostly focused on sort of keyboards or that kind of thing or synths with this little nam roundup obviously there is going to be tons of stuff launched in the guitar world in the you know the, the audio interface world yes oh yes actually this is my hope talking about audio interfaces um i mentioned on sonic uh, i think last week that i would like to see some more mixing desks small format but but with giant amounts of uh inputs lots and lots of input possibilities you know capabilities and it'd be a mixer and a combined audio interface and it have maybe some performance element like we saw in roland's terrific mx1 uh, the mx1 for me was one of the standouts of the show last year uh for me what stopped it being an absolutely brilliant product was i would have liked to have seen more stereo inputs just more inputs really because you know apart from the fantastic thing of four uh usb inputs which could carry usb audio and data it just only had six mono inputs and really i would personally be needing at least double that really so you know will they bring out an mx2 that could be pretty cool too so uh so that mixer combined mixer audio interface area i'd like to see some expansions on but i'm not going to go into any of the other areas and there's going to be loads of stuff in a pa world and all sorts of stuff and maybe some software new software releases etc but that's that's it for me now i'm just gonna <laughs> gonna leave it there um i've talked plenty long enough now so yes i might do a video next week just to sort of follow up this and just see how many of the things i've talked about actually kind of got right or got very very wrong but anyway um don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, my name's Gaz Williams and thanks very much for watching and see you soon.